Thank you for coming. Actually, there's more people than I expected. <laughs> Do you guys know I'm giving away the Apple Watch by the end of the day? <laughs> okay, well, you, you wasn't coming for Apple Watch, right? Uh, okay, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> All right, so let me see if the clicker works. Didn't work. Let's see. Oh, there you go. All right, so uh, hey guys, my name is Alan. Um, I'm from QCT Quanta, and I'm the product marketing manager for the OCP product and also some of the offshore product like we call it 19 inch, right? So today I want to talk about some of the new stuff that we try to present this year. So giving a little bit of history, Jason Taylor on the keynote today say, hey, it's been six years. Well, I was a little bit surprised. Six years seems like a, like a lifetime, but yeah, it's been, I never seen this kind of crowd like in, in my past six years in OCP, but I, I think it's a good thing, right? Everyone's contributing their ideas and I see a lot of new vendors and then everyone is having different ideas. So um, for Quanta QCT, we have been working with Facebook and OCP community since the very beginning of the six years ago. And remember, it's the same venue right here in Santa Clara. So we have that Facebook initiative, OCP, and then we start seeing there's actually a wider adoption of the OCP requirement uh, outside of what the Facebook specific. So we start having that, what we call the private cloud offering, right? Uh, we feel like there's a mark, bigger market back in the days and then uh, tried and pushing like some other different alternative like uh, fulfill our customers demand. So we have spent a lot of time on it. And then of course, you know, two years ago, Microsoft announced uh, the OCS, Open Cloud Service, and we are also the partner with Microsoft. And then it become naturally to actually offer it as an off-channel product. So as you can imagine, turning the Facebook product into an off-channel, uh, off, um, the, the, the off-the-shelf channel kind of product, there's a lot, still a lot of effort we have to put it into. Imagine we have to have VMware certifications. We have to have Ubuntu, Windows, and all this regulatory stuff that we have to mint. So we do spend a lot of effort into it, and then we, we do have a lot of success in the past six years, and I can imagine in the next 10 years it will be another great success. So as you see, like um, the next thing that we really focus on is two things, artificial intelligence and of course the RSD. Uh, um, Jason Waxman from Intel talked about RSD today. And I'll give you a little bit of background on how our direction and how our vision of this artificial intelligence and the, and, the big, uh, and, the, and the RSD is gonna go to. So let me give you a little bit new things, right? Um, one of the things Kushakwa from Microsoft talked about is the common chassis, the Project Olympus. So we see that common chassis is really important for a lot of people, right? So uh, Facebook, they have this copy chassis, which is who you three know. On the left and on the right, these are the things they deploy in their data center today. It's a very high density compute, and then they have like this Leper and Yosemite, right? A different workloads for different applications. But we see, hey, one piece is missing, the storage. They have Knox inside the storage um, platform in the rack, but since you have this common chassis called copy, why can't we do something with it? And then this is how we're introducing the, what we call the lighting bulbs, right? This is the old flash NVMe tray that fits in the cubby chassis, and then it has 16 NVMe drives, right? This could work as a direct attach or over the fabric. So we have flavors for direct attach. Just imagine you have like two nodes side by side, on uh, two computer on the left and on the right, and you have one lighting bulb in the middle, and you have direct connection to it. So it's very straightforward. And then if you want to use like lighting bulb uh, all across all three nodes, and then expand it through Ethernet to uh, having a adjacent rag or whatever rag you want to access the data through it, you can also do that too. So we just feel like a common chassis for this copy infrastructure could be beneficial to some of the deployments that you have today, or the challenges that you're facing today. So um, just like I said earlier, we feel like uh, the Facebook specification is great, but uh, there's a lot of customer that I have, for instance, the telco, the, uh, the hosting, and then the enterprise, they need something else, right? The multiple was great and the feature was great, but the data integrity, like Facebook has such a big de deployment of values. So their software stack can move the workload from one or the other if the, 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 the node just fail, right? But for my customer, they need, um, they need rate controller for their data integrity. They need uh, a little bit more like EMI shield for their regulatory. 
So this is the bottom part that we have as a different flavor than the general Facebook offering. It's uh, having six small form factor, still have two PCIe car, but it does have all this EMI and um, uh, the FCC, the VCCI, and then the KCC. You can ship literally to anywhere in the world and then still passing the regulatory customer without any problem. So just keep that in mind, and that's one of the offering that you or, or challenge you might see uh, when trying to adapt OCP. So let's talk about a little bit about artificial intelligence. This is probably one of the biggest topics in the industry today. And last year, we introduced Big Surf. Uh, it's one of the offshore products that we have been co-working with uh, Facebook to power on their artificial intelligence um, brand right behind the network. And then this year, we wanted to introduce Big Basin. And this is also a brand child of what we have been doing with, uh, with Facebook. As you know, NVIDIA started introducing what they call the, um, P, uh, the Pascal module, and it has this MV link. It has a really good benefit to, um, to, to the artificial intelligence frameworks. And Kushagwa from Microsoft also showed a very similar product like that. But this particular board right here, I'm showing on the left right here, my left right here, is actually using the same base board from the DGX1, which is the NVIDIA product appliances. So you can imagine this signal integrity and all the, all the stuff that had been done by NVIDIA, it's also applying to the OCP. And we're planning to contribute this back to the community and getting a bigger adoption. So we can also have um, multiple, uh, this, uh, what we call the JBug, just a bunch of GPU connected to each other. So you can connect it up to four, just like uh, Kuchak, what Microsoft was saying today. So you can have a 32 GPU form in your rack, if you have enough power, of course, right? So this is a little bit more detail, and then we feel like this is going to be the first one. And we are planning to have this in mass production mode by early Q2 of this year. So if you have any interest of this, please uh, come to talk to us about it. So um, one of the interesting things I have also seen from my customer in the past is I have this co-location space, and, but I, I do plan to, because my business was going so fast, I do have plan to go in to build my own data center. But I don't want to wait till that time before I can adapt open, right? Do you have something in the, in the intermediate and that I can actually take it today, but when I decide to go all the way to open, right, I can use the same infrastructure. So this is a, this is a brand trial that our engineer team actually come up with. So um, in this, Upper hand, you can see the, the, there's an inside portion of it, it's 19 inch. Well, literally, it's not 19 inch, but it fits in, into a 19 inch rack, right? Literally, it's like uh, somewhere around 16 or 17 inches wide to fit in a 19 inch rack. So it's a 2 u 4 now, using the next generation uh, motherboard from Facebook and then the uh, Project, Mon Project Olympus. So uh, for the next generation of Facebook, you will have a 2U4 node, but for Project Olympus, you might have a 2U2 node instead. So the magic of this is you have an outer skirt, a sheet metal that you can attach to it, and it will turn this 19 inch into a 21 inch, right? But that's not the only magic. It's because this chassis was tailor made to actually fit the bus bar too. So when you turn it into 21 inch, it didn't necessary for all the server that in the world can actually plug into the, to the open rack because you have a centralized bus bar in the middle, right? So we specifically designed these chassis in the specific depth that you can actually change the power supply that was situated in the middle right here. This could be two standard power supply on the up and the, on the bottom, but you can also change this to a, power, a bus bar clip. So when you have that outer skirt and then you remove the power supply and change to the bus bar, this literally can actually just plug in any of the open rack that's out there uh, for ORV2 standard and then turn it into the open rack. We do have a customer who is very excited about this because they do have a co-location infrastructure today and they are actually uh, using open, um, what, what we call a more like a 19 inch product and then they will use this, but they do have a public cloud data center they are, they are deploying right now can also you le leverage this. So for their validation purposes, right, they validation one system, but they can use it in their co-location uh, place and then also in the open rack space. So this will be one of the things that we really want to deploy in the second half of this year. So um, if you have more questions about this, please come to our booth and you will see a physical server, a physical box right there, right? 
So also, when we design this, one of the many, many things that we ask ourselves, so you have two for now, and the failed domain will be increased, right? We have seen a lot of OEMs, ODM, having this, what we call a convention to you for no. And one of the major uh, single point of failure that you have to consider is there's a lot of, a lot of boards in between those to provide like hard drive, um, hard drive signals, power supplies, and like all, all the other different signals. So I kind of listed out for the common things that we all haven't seen, like hard drive backplant, linking boards, mid plans, and then PDB boards, right? And fan boards, things like that. And then the com combination of the NTB at mean time between failure is somewhere around 224,000 hours. It seems like a pretty good number, right? But if you imagine, if I can have that reduce or improve by eight times, wouldn't that be better, right? Because like a lot of people having this master and slave and or whatever duplication that they have to do, and because they worry about, hey, if I have one single no fail, and what about, what, what about, they have to reset in the in a different system because one single no fail means like a whole system or four motherboard was taken at the same time. So when we designed the system that I was showing you earlier, this one right here, we have one simple concept and one simple requirement for ourselves is it has to be OCP, it has to be simple enough, and we have to keep the failed domain down as much as possible. So this will be the requirement, and then we will be able to achieve it and achieve like eight times of a better uh, and mean time between failure. So this will be something we are really, really excited about. All right, we also have this one right here. We have been working with Intel and um, the financial industry very, very, very closely having this what we call a Declathlete platform. And we have already in the, uh, in the granny generation have the Declathlete deploy uh, in a very um, big value. And then we feel like the next generation um, Skylake, right? Codename Skylake CPU will have that. And then we have a lot of innovation on the new chassis. Um, just taking the upper picture, we have this one new chassis, right? Has four, not only the four large form factor drive, but it also has four small form factor drive. And the four small form factor drive is the, what they call a two and a, hit, a two and, two and a half inch drive with a seven millimeter high. It's a very industry standard, it's not proprietary. All the major SSD vendor actually provide those kind of form factor also. So imagine you have like the large form factor drive as a cold storage and the small form factor drive as a operating system or cache, you will have a very, um, very unique tiering box in your, in your space, right? And then we also have the small form factors. Small form factor, instead of having all just offering either A or 12, uh, either A or 10, by most of the, um, what you're seeing today, we're gonna offer like 12 drives. And all these drive trade carrier is gonna be completely uh, hot swappable and then completely schoolless, right? You don't have to use any tools to actually service any of the individual, individual drives. And then also last one, um, like we, we feel like there's a lot of, People are talking about fabric, they are needing for more uh, high-speed interconnectivities and more, more connections like 25 gig, infinite bands, and other, other protocols. So we make sure our expansion slot is actually um, gonna be the, the maximum numbers that's possible. So we will have five PCI expansion slot available in this one new chassis. So we're also very exciting about this one. And we are seeding some of the early customers with this platform for them to actually test out the Skylake um, performance and so forth. So if you're interested, please come to our booth and talk to some of the sales representative how you get access to it, okay? So Jason Wexman from Intel talk about RSD and we have been heavily, heavily invested ourselves into RSD. So one of the questions we ask ourselves is how does RSD works? And is RSD gonna be the cure to all your utilization problems, right? So the way we're seeing this is RSD was meant to disaggregate it and then pull the resources and then recompose the resource as we need it. So not only from the computing side of it, the storage side of it, the MVME side of it, and then the fabric side of it, we feel like there's a lot of things we can do. So let's see how we really see this gonna work out. So, so some of the application or real life situations, right? So I'm taking an example as a hosting company, right? So if you have a new customer who wanna sign up for one of the, uh, one of the services, 
if they go to like, oh, I want a, a new VMware in, instance, right? And then they say, oh, this is what I want. And then you, you as an operator, you go to your resources pool and saying, oh, I have all this networking storage and fabric, right? And then why can I pull this together, like logically, and then deploy it to the client, right, directly? So the magical of this is RSD allow you to recompose all these resources on the fly, right? If you deploy VMware, the hypervisor, the vCenter would do exact, well, they're doing a very good job because vCenter has all this utilization and OpenStack has all these utilizations. But imagine you have a cross-platform, a very heterogeneous environment. You have to check vCenter one time and you have to check um, OpenStack dashboard at one time to understand what you have in your exposal. But if you have RSD, you could have a centralized interface to actually just see all this under, because underneath is all hardware, right? So if you can have a one single point of view at the CIO or CTO viewpoint, and then have all this utilization available to you, I think that would be an easy and greater way to actually make sure your data center is running at best efficiency as possible. So I think that's a grand picture of what we envision, and I think that's really important for, um, for most of you that's running uh, operation right there. So um, we take the RSD very seriously, uh, very seriously, and so we have a lot of hardware that's available right now. Um, it's OCP compliant, uh, V2.1 compliant, and it's already available to actually purchase for POC or some small deployment and so forth. So just in case you're interested, you can actually go to our booth and show some live demo or uh, static stuff already, right? So we're putting RSD into Open Rack to make sure those merge as a very good ecosystem and continue to uh, be, be valuable to, to you guys. So one last thing, right? Um, QCT has a lot of full line of offerings and all that stuff from the rack level, from the networking and the storage and server. So we feel like since RSD is an important topic, we're not gonna really focus on just the rack, open rack. We're gonna make sure our own entire product line starting 2017 by the Skylake launch will have the RSD feature. So we're betting very heavily in the RSD infrastructure and we're hoping you are also the same. So with the global footprint and the full line of product that we have, we feel like QCD is gonna be a really good partner for you to actually work with. If you haven't heard about us, if, you, uh, if we weren't new to you, uh, please come to our booth to understand us a little bit more. And we feel like there's a lot of things we can help you to actually run and then solve some of the real challenges that you're facing today. So uh, thank you. Is there any questions? Maybe, maybe not. All right. So we have uh, we have raffle tickets right there, just in case you want to win the Apple Watch. Um, there's a girl passing out a raffle ticket, and we will have a join by 4:50 today at the at the booth. So just come by our booth. Thank you, guys. <laughs>